Now, Carolyn, I know this is one of your favorite subjects, and it's also a controversial one, too. Could you tell me exactly what is candidiasis? Yes, um, I became interested in this condition because two of my sisters suffer from it very badly. Um, candida is a one-celled fungus. It lives in our intestines, and it can grow from the mucous membranes in our eyes through our nose straight down to the rectum. And it can cause symptoms in any of those places by local irritation. The toxins or byproducts from yeast can also flood the body with substances that are akin to alcohol and aldehydes. So you can actually feel drunk and have dizziness and fatigue as if you were drunk. And um, what's happened in our society is we're overeating sugar, uh, taking enough antibiotics will kill off the good and bad bacteria in our intestines and allow the yeast to overgrow. So it, it's a condition of modern living. I have two books that I've brought along. One is by uh, Dr. Crook. He's also written a, a cookbook and it's very important to, to know what to eat when you're trying to avoid um, candida. And also, I've written a book on uh, 2,000 cases of candidiasis. Wow, we've got Karen on the line. Karen, thank you very much for your video. I think a lot of those things apply to a lot of our listeners. Now, Carolyn, I know I'll be happy to answer any further questions that you can have on the subject. Well, um, I'm interested in knowing how do I know whether I have it or not. That's a good question. Um, diagnosis, uh, in my office I use a blood test for a diagnosis, but it's not readily available and it's not covered by OHIP. And this is part of the problem. Uh, our OHIP system isn't covering the, the testing that I feel is necessary. Some people use stool analysis to check. Mm -hmm. And sometimes just a straight av avoidance of foods that cause yeast will help you get a diagnosis. The Candida Foundation will put up their name uh, for you will help you um, find a doctor or practitioner to work with. Oh, okay. And uh, aside from just correcting diet, if diet has been a problem, are there other ways of treating it? Um, it's usually avoiding avoidance of sugar, bread with yeast, eating garlic, which is an antifungal, uh, eating yogurt, and then w under doctor's supervision, maybe taking antifungal medications by mouth which is a, opposed to just taking them for a vaginitis, which would be a local treatment. Karen, do you have any other questions for Carolyn? Well, I am um, curious. As my principal symptom has been this cough, which I've had for nearly two years now. I also get very bad sinus headaches, so I assume that the sinuses are the origin of the, the cough. And I'm wondering if, if that is something that might be a candidiasis symptom. Yes, in my practice I see a lot of patients. You see, the mucous membranes can fill up with the yeast. The yeast irritates the mucous membranes. You pr produce mucus and it drips down the back of your throat and you cough. Also, the holes that the yeast produce will allow when you inhale you to become allergic to dust and mites and other things. So sometimes you have to take an antifungal medication and gargle with it or use it as nose drops. Again, under a doctor's advice. Okay. Have we helped you and answered your question? Absolutely. Terrific. Terrific. I've got an address if you want some more information on the subject, so get your pencil out. If you'd also like more information on the subject, please contact the Candida Research and Information Foundation, 598 St. Clair Avenue West, Toronto, M6C1A6, or you can phone area code 416-656-0047. Now, Gordon, this is one investment I hadn't heard of before, and that's annuities purchased from charitable organizations. The 65-year-old anonymous viewer from Toronto wrote in saying that he or she had recently purchased an annuity from the Salvation Army at a rate of 10.3% for life, and that 40% of the income from the annuity was tax-deductible. Now, I know it does seem a little late to be asking this question since the annuity has already been purchased, but the question is, are annuities from different charities safe and due to tax deductions mean much. The viewer also adds that their estate is going to be going to charity anyway. Now, this is a fascinating question, and in fact, this is something new to me. I hadn't heard about this until we received this uh, letter from the viewer, and I made some inquiries and spoke to uh, the Salvation Army at length about this. Yes, indeed, they do issue annuities, and in fact, uh, they uh, run ads in the Reader's Digest, uh, where you can uh, fill in a little card and send it in, and they will send you all the information. Now. The annuities which are issued by the Salvation Army are issued directly by them. They are not uh, issued through an insurance company, and that makes them different from other types of annuities. 
the uh, interest rate is guaranteed for life and uh, indeed it may be a better rate than you get from the insurance companies because they don't have any middle uh, man they don't pay any commissions on these now the way these work and it's quite fascinating uh, when you get your payment on your annuity it's a blend of the principal and the interest mm -hmm. the principal portion does not bear any tax you only have to pay tax on the interest the idea being that the principal is just a partial refund of your capital in the case of this particular viewer I asked about whether uh, indeed uh, it was going to be a situation in which uh, this person would get as they said a 40 percent tax break in fact they get at their age 60 percent of the income received tax-free 40 percent is taxable wow okay now the benefit for the Salvation Army here is that when the uh, individual dies any principal which is left goes to the Salvation Army as a donation so uh, that uh, provides the Salvation Army with some income if the person doesn't live beyond the normal uh, the normal age now you also have another situation here which is uh, which is quite interesting because um, the Salvation Army uh, being paying these these annuities out people may say as this viewer said are these safe well the answer is they're as safe as the Salvation Army they've been around in Canada for 125 years and right. unless you think the Salvation Army is about to go belly up they are perfectly safe can any charity take advantage of this? Well, it's an interesting, uh, interesting situation. The Salvation Army has, in its original charter, the right to issue annuities directly. There's only a few religious organizations that have that. Mm -hmm. Canadian Bible Society, the Anglican Church, the United Church. Other charities would have to work through uh, an insurance company to do something like this. Now, Carolyn, the last question of the show goes to you. And I have to admit, when we got this in, we all thought this was just a little bit wacky. And we really didn't think anyone would have an answer. But I did look in your book. And lo and behold, there it was in the index. Mm -hmm. Curious? You curious? Good. Let's listen to this next question from the village of McKellar. This is Hector Moore, McKellar, Ontario. The question is for a medical doctor. What can be done with my husband's burning feet? Thank you. Yes, it is in my book. And I'm sure you've already checked out arthritis, uh, heart disease, and diabetes with your medical doctor. What I find works are B vitamins. I would uh, have a blood test for B12 to, to rule out pernicious anemia and um, ask a medical doctor to give a series of B12 injections and that very often helps. Now there are other things like um, cold uh, foot baths at oh, night. Oh come on, not, you know, that's cold water again. <laughs> yeah. She's determined to dunk us in cold oh, water, guess, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> the cold water will help stimulate the circulation, but certainly if someone has diabetes, they should avoid that sort of thing. Uh, soaking in, in Epsom salts and there are other herbs. Uh, Mrs. Moore, you'll get this book so that you can uh, read through the remedies. Boy, you, you, re you really are hung up on that, <laughs> <aren't> <laughs> <you>? <laughs> Well, that's question and answer for this week. I hope you're learning as much as we are. I'd like to thank you all for your very interesting questions. And Gordon, Carolyn, thank you both for some great and interesting advice. Gordon, one more thing. Financially speaking, what should we be thinking about doing with our money right now? Well, you know, we're coming up to year-end tax planning, and we're also in a situation we were talking about the Salvation Army. A lot of the charities are very short this year, and they're really scratching. What I suggest people might want to do is do a little Christmas giving and get a tax break at the same time. Don't forget you charitable deduction deadline is the 31st of December. Share the, uh, the Christmas joy with people and at the same time help the charities that are in some trouble these days. What terrific advice. As you can see, our Q&A experts can answer just about anything. And we have bench strength, as they say in the big leagues. As usual, the Q&A rule applies. If you change the subject, we'll call up a new player. Okay, get your pencils out. Here's how you can get in touch with us. Our mailing address is question and answer, box 200, station Q, Toronto, M4T2T1. The Q&A fax number is area code 416-484-4519. To call our 24-hour answering machine, you can dial 1-800-668-1467. And remember, it's a toll-free number, 416-684-1467. 